Arc Search, honestly, I'm a huge, huge fan of this. And I think that this could be the future of Search. What's up, friends? Paul here. And today I'm excited to share with you Arc Search. So for many people, when you go to search for an answer to something, often you go to Google. However, I have found a tool that might actually be better for your searching purposes. And before we continue on, I wanna invite you to smash that subscribe button and hit the like button so it doesn't get completely lonely. Thanks. It's called Arc Search. It's made by the browser company. Uh, the browser company makes an awesome browser called the Arc Browser. I've made videos on that on my podcast channel, so be sure to check that out. Um, but today we're gonna be diving into the app Arc Search, which I believe they're going to be bringing to the browser soon. So that is pretty awesome. Um, but it's this app here. And what I love about it is that it does all, a lot of the heavy lifting for search for you. For example, let's say you're in the market for a GPU and you just want to know what's a good bang for the buck option. And so right here, I've got this option right here. And then what you do is that you can select browse for me. So you can select it and it will open up like a regular search, but the browse for me feature is gold. And what that does is it basically creates a website for you is what they call it. Um, it basically takes the most important information from a variety of sites, as you can see here, and it kind of digests it all and basically gives you the top choice of the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 Super. And then for the budget option, they put the 4060 Ti. Whether or not that's the best is probably open for debate, but for the purpose of finding a quick answer, it's actually really, really good. And so just like that, you've got a lot of great things to start from. You can even click into some of these to find more information. Um, one of the my favorite things is that it actually references Reddit, uh, as you can see there, um, because Reddit to me often is where you can find a lot of, you know, user data, a lot of people using it and what they love about it, what they don't love. And so you get a lot of um, interesting information there. Um, but let's say you're looking, you're comparing some GPUs and you want to actually consider um, what's better, let's say like, um, which is better value, let's say a 4070 versus a, hmm, let's say 3070 GPU. So the previous gen versus the current gen. And let's see, if, whoop. so this is what it would look like if it was like a Google search. Um, so, for, so for comparison, what your normal search would be like this. Um, so they say like the 4070 outperforms the RTX 3070 by 21% in our combined benchmark results. However, we wanted to make a um, page for us and you can actually squeeze it like I did um, with your fingers and it will create a summary of the results, which is awesome. However, I want it to actually browse for me. So we're going to do the browse for me option and it's going to search and make a website for us. So let's see what it comes up. And as you can see, it's drawing from Reddit. Um, so you can see the 4070 is priced at $599, $100 more than the 3070. Um, and it offers a 30% more performance than the 3070. Um, slight variation for them we saw, at least on the top result from Google. Um, but you get basically get the price and then you can see some YouTube videos. I love that they provide that because that's probably where you want to go next is like find a YouTube video that compares the two and actually has game um, results of the two. Um, and then you can see like the feature differences. So it summarizes it, you know, the 4070 includes 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Um, it would have been nice that they would have said like the um, 3070 had like eight gigs of VRAM, but they didn't. So that, that, that could have been better. Um, and then you can see like places that you can dive deeper. Um, or let's say you want to build a budget uh, PC. So let's dive into that. Um, give me a good budget PC part list. And let's say browse for me. That's probably a weird way of searching for it, but Google gets all kinds of weird things. So let's see what it comes up with. So an i3-12100, uh, not a bad pick, a Asus motherboard, memory, 16 gigs, um, the GPU, they're going with the RX 6600, 
with eight gigs of VRAM, um, got a case and a power supply. And my guess is that they took this from, looks like maybe Reddit. Um, and they go into some details. Did the first one not include, okay, they do have storage. We dive into some other options here. Um, they have another YouTube video. And so that's, let's say budget PC options. Oops. Build under, let's say a thousand. Let's browse for me. See what it comes up with. So they, I love that it uh, includes a price on some of these. Um, okay. There we go. Wait, no one. Okay. Under a thousand with prices. Let's see if it can be smart enough to give me that information. Um, while we're doing this, I just want to say that like AI search right now is at a point where it's getting better. However, I find that I'm often frustrated with AI search. Um, a f popular one is like perplexity. Um, and obviously you can try using like chat GPT, Gemini, and then um, obviously Google search is starting to add AI features. However, I often find that it brings me back to the, like the basic Google search because there's like things that I want to reference or go back to. Um, because if you just get a bunch of text and you don't know where it got that information, it could be unreliable or questionable source. And so I usually like to go back to see where did it draw that information. And I love that this arc search gives you those like links so you can see like, okay, where did it draw it from? And then I can click on it to get more information. Um, did it not give me prices? Huh, that's surprising. Okay, so sometimes it doesn't do exactly what you want it to. So something to keep in mind, but let's see what it gives me. An i5-14400, um, the RX 7600 with the NVIDIA 3060 as an other option. It's not, it's not bad. It's not bad. Like, you know, this is a, probably a great starting point for anyone like looking for um, options. Let's, let's see if it can give me like information on how to repair something. Let's say, oh, my dishwasher recently broke down. Um, let's say how to repair a heating element. I just know this all too well on a dishwasher. Okay, let's have it search and see what it comes up with. I'm, I'm just curious, you know, this is just random and we're doing this live for fun. So it gives you a step-by-step -step instructions, which I think is pretty amazing. And since I've done this, I can, you know, attest to whether this is somewhat accurate or not. Obviously, if you're doing this, I would probably make sure that this is a legit source before undergoing a repair like the heating element. So safety first, unplug the dishwasher or shut off the house circuit breaker for the dishwasher. Safety first. I love it. Um, access panels. Um, pull out the dishwasher. That sounds good. Position the dishwasher's power cord so it moves freely as you pull out the dishwasher from the cone. Remove the heating element. Pull the bottom dish rack out of the dish. I mean, this is pretty, um, pretty spot on. You know, my tools required. That's cool. Um, so it's showing you things that you might need and then you can see it. I'm, I'm sure if you provide like the actual model, it might give you more information. Um, and then it gives you additional tips, test before reassembly, check for leaks, take photos. Yes. I highly recommend if you're undergoing any repair, whether it be your computer or I've, I've done this before where like you start doing something and you're like, I probably should take a picture before I start messing with stuff. Um, cause you never know what's going to happen. So that great, great ideas, great ideas. And that gives you dive deeper, um, tips. So I just think this is a fantastic way to search the web instead of like, um, having to, you know, go to Google. Let's, let's do the same search just like on Google. Let's see what, so it just like brings you up, you know, a video, which probably would do the trick, but then you're gonna have to watch it instead of like getting like a quick overview of the whole project, um, a repair guide. So like you, you would have to click into these, um, to get the information. Whereas like in a quick search, all of a sudden I've got 
a lot of the information. Let's ask it to summarize this. So we just pinch it. Pin if I can do this. There we go. Pinch it. I guess two fingers works just fine for pinching. Um, gives you a, a cost estimate. And actually, this is true. Like it could cost anywhere from like 25 bucks to 375 if you hire somebody. So I think that's pretty accurate. Um, it kind of gives you an overview of what's on this page, which I think is fantastic. So um, Arc Search, honestly, I'm a huge, huge fan of this. And I think that this could be the future of search. Um, and so I would highly recommend checking this out if you're looking for a better way to do search. I, I think that this will potentially, you know, this this could be the future of search um, as, as we know it. Um, let's say, let's, let's do another one. Let's do it. I'm, I'm having too much fun here. Uh, let's see. Best, hmm, what should we search for? Best laptop 2024. Browse for me. I'm curious what it will come up with. It's, it's going on a bunch of different sites, as you can see here. Okay, so the best overall Apple MacBook Air M3. Hard to say no to that. I mean, the, the M3, the silicon chips are just phenomenal. Um, you do have a best value. I wouldn't be surprised if this is accurate because, let's be real, Windows gives you often a good bang for your buck, whereas Mac, you're going to have to pay that premium for the Mac. Great, great computers, but, you know, there, there's sometimes a premium to it. But it gives you just like so many great details. Okay, best for specific users. I love this. Um, so depending on your use case, you might want to consider some of these. Um, let's say for best laptop for you know, fur, fur, uh, video editing. Let's see what they come up with for video editing. I'm sure we'll get some MacBook Pros in the mix. Um, I'm just really curious. <laughs> and the first one that we see here is the Apple MacBook Pro 14 inch, um, which is one that I am very familiar with. Uh, I don't have the M3 model, but I do have an M, I think it's an M1 Pro. Let's see. The, the M1 anything, the silicon chips, yeah, M1 Pro um, are just phenomenal. Great computers. Uh, and then you get the 16 inch, okay, 14 inch versus, versus 16 inch. I personally like the 16 inch. Um, it just gives you extra screen real estate. And so it kind of breaks down into each of these options. Um, and, and one of the areas that I think the, um, this does so well is comparative search. So for example, let's say you're in a market for one of the Apple MacBook Pros. So let's do this. Uh, MacBook Pro, uh, let's just compare the sizes versus 16 inch because like maybe you're shopping and you're just not sure which size is best for you. Let's see what it comes up with and it's making a website for you. Okay. Size 14 inch is more compact and lighter, making it easier to carry Also, significantly larger display with a 16 inch, uh, which may be preferable for tasks that require more screen real estate. Absolutely. Um, and it goes into the battery life, the performance, um, it even talks about the thermals, like how the 16 inch model may have a slight edge in performance due to better thermals and larger size. Um, ports, I don't, I don't think that's actually, maybe it's the type of port. Um, hmm, I don't know if that's, so sometimes you just do, you do need to double check some of this information to make sure it's accurate. But for the most part, it is a phenomenal, great starting point. Um, or maybe you're looking for the different processors. So let's say M1 Pro vers vers versus, versus M, well, I didn't get the versus in there, M2 Pro. Let's see how it compares these processors and what it recommends. Okay, so it's looking at the M1 and M2 Pro MacBook Pros, which, you know, makes some sense. Um, bum, 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 bum. You know, I'm just curious if it offers like the percentage difference. Obviously, if you probably click on some of these, it says it outperforms in Geekbench, but it doesn't give the scores themselves. Um, 
But yeah, I, I think that like it gives you enough information that like it could help you make a decision. Um, this one, maybe not as helpful, but overall, I think like if you're looking for an answer to like a comparison question, I think this is a phenomenal way to get like quick results and to figure out what you need. So ARC search, what do I think about it? I think it's a phenomenal tool. Right now it's free. So like, why not download it and give it a try, see if it works for you. Um, and again, if you want to check out the ARC browser, I'll leave some links to the videos in the description so you can check that out. Um, I, I think that ARC, the, the company is doing some really innovative things. And this is just like an example of what they're doing. Um, I, I think that if they keep it up, they could compete with something like a Google. Uh, obviously, they would have to do a lot to, you know, be the dominant search because everyone, I mean, not everyone, but like a huge percentage of the user, you know, people that use the web, use Google Chrome, they use Google search. And um, that, that's what people are have grown used to and are accustomed to. And to change people's habits of search takes a lot. So uh, I would say, hey, check this out. This is a up and coming company that are making a great product that I think could help the end user find information faster and better um, without having to click into all these different subreddits and um, websites to get the information that they're looking for. Um, so I, I think Arc Search, if, if I were to give it a rating, I, I think it's a five out of five, honestly. Like it's just so streamlined, so easy to use. And um, they do have like the different pages. Like, so if you, you know, want to go back to an earlier search, you can, um, which I think is great. You know, you might want to eventually close out of some of them because I'm guessing that might, you know, affect your RAM usage on your uh, phone there. But overall, this is a great tool for anyone looking to level up their search um, and have considered other AI searches, I definitely think that this is one worth checking out. So who, who do I think it's for? I would say anyone <laughs> that uses search, whether that's Google or otherwise, I think that this is a tool worth having around. I, when I, when I consider searching now, instead of just going to Google, I sometimes go to Arc Search instead because I think I'll get the information I'm looking for faster. Um, or like get basically an answer to a question faster than going to Google, which at the end of the day, that's probably what you're looking for is an answer or a um, quick summary of information. So what about you? What do you currently use for search? Are you planning to use Arc Search? Let me know in the comments below and join the channel fam. Hit that subscribe button. And if you want, the like button also is down there. So be sure to smash that so it doesn't get completely lonely. And until next time, my friends, stay techie. Wah, 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 wah.